The Kingdom of Spain is an independent country in Europe. It also happens to be the largest country in southern Europe. The capital of Spain is Madrid. It is bordered by the Mediterranean Sea on its east and south and the Atlantic Ocean in the northwest. Besides the famous game of football, the country is rich in historical sites and has its own unique heritage. The Royal Palace of Madrid, Alhambra, Sagrada Familia, Casa Patlo, Alcar of Seville and Santiago de Compostela Cathedral are just a handful places where one could see the beauty of Spain's ancient past. This beautiful country was a few decades back drowned in revolts and rebellions. People sought to rule. They wanted to change the society and execute their own thoughts. The Spanish Civil War was a three-year-long fight for power, where millions of soldiers lost their lives, children became orphans, and civilians were not spared too. The reasons why the Spanish Civil War was triggered The situation of the country was bad, and even though the immediate cause of Spanish Civil War may be political, there were many other causes which were lurking in the environment of Spanish for years. The Spaniards were looking forward to having decent lives. Agriculture was one of the most important means to earn living in Spain. Towards the south of the nation were many estates where laborers worked. These workers did not own their lands, hence worked on these estates, or latifundia, which was earned by grandees. Towards the north, farmers had small lands and were very unstable economically. More than half the population used to starve. The entire army was conservative, and for every hundred soldiers there was a general. The officers were excessive and the soldiers were poorly armed. The army had excessive interference in the government businesses. They even rigged the elections. The government formed were never elected fairly. There were 12 governments that were formed between 1918 to 1923, and none of them succeeded in running Spain efficaciously. Catholic Church was overly powerful and hoarded too much wealth. There were many who were against the practices of church. The wealthy were quite close to the church and none of them wanted to bring about a change in the country. Even though the Spaniards were not church people and hardly went for mass, the rural area people upheld their devotion in the religion. Limiting the power of the church would mean an impartial Spain. The church also controlled the education system. Main Cause of the Spanish Civil War Spain was going through a rough phase in the 19th century. Even though there were many who looked forward to reform Spain, they had to fight with immense political holder who refrained from changes. Back in 1812, Spanish constitution was set up so the power of the kings could be limited and Spain would be established as a liberal state. This constitution failed to uphold itself, and King Ferdinand II had it dissolved. Oligarchy was powerful, and Spain ran on land and agriculture business. The wealthy held high government positions and vast estates. There was a revolt in 1868 that felled the House of Bourbon and Queen Isabella II. The main causes for the 1868 revolt were liberal movement among the middle-class people, which was led by General Chan Prim, who was troubled with the extreme obscurantism of the kingdom and a series of rebellions in the city. King Amadeo I of House of Savoy had taken the position of Queen Isabella II but had to renounce his position in 1873. Amadeo I faced immense political stress after him the First Spanish Republic was formed, which too didn't last for long. The House of Bourbons was restored once again in 1874 by Alfonso XII, who was also responsible to end the First Spanish Republic in a coup. The monarchy then had to face anarchists and Carlists. The anarchists looked forward to self-governed societies, while the Carlists were those who looked to establish an entirely different line of Bourbons on the throne of Spain. Spain did not take sides in World War I, after which the business class, military and the working class came together to get rid of the government, which was fraudulent, but they were not successful. Dangers of growing communism increased in these times. Miguel Primo de Rivera gained power in one of the military coups of 1923. Spain was then under a military dictatorship. Rivera's dictatorship lasted for seven years, after which his supporters seemed to diminish, which led to his resignation in the January of 1930. 
Rivero's position was taken over by General Damaso Berenque, and he then stepped down for Admiral Juan Bautista Asna Cabanas. They continued the dictatorship form of government. There were very few people who actually supported monarchy form of government, so King Alfonso XIII called in for a republic form of government to be formed in 1931. He also held the municipal elections on April 12, 1931. In almost all the provincials, the republicans and the socialists won. King Alfonso XIII left the country and reserved the claim to the now non-operational throne. Monarchy was restored only in 1941 when the grandson of King Alfonso XIII, Juan Carlos, inherited the throne as the monarchy form of government was confirmed. Asnar's government crumbled and the Second Spanish Republic was formed. Alcala Zamora was made the president and head of state with a provisional government. Every segment of the society supported the republic form of government. However, there was an incident where a taxi driver was attacked just outside a club of the monarchists and protests began throughout western parts of Spain and Madrid. The slow response of the government to this occurrence aggravated the people more. Several strikes were called by Confederation del Trabajo CNT, that led to serious conflicts between the CNT and the civil guard, who are military people but with the job of police officers in Seville. So much violence made people think that the Second Republic government was nothing less cruel than the monarchy form of government. CNT said they would use revolt to overthrow the running government. In the elections of June 1931, the Socialists and Republicans won again. Great Depression had set its foot in Spain and the government tried to calm the situation by establishing eight-hour day work and granting land tenure to the farmers. There were some contentious reforms that the military continuously underwent because of which the nation was always under the threat of fascism. A new constitution which was liberal, reformist and democratic in nature was declared in December. The new constitution was a broadly secular and some of the Catholics were against it. Manuel Azana was the prime minister of the country and he took his position in October 1931. The anarchists did not participate in the general elections of 1933 and the parties won. After November 1933, the occurrences which took place is known as the Black Two Years and it was this period which triggered the civil war. Alejandro Leroux, who was from the Radical Republican Party, made a government which altered all the changes that were made by the government before and pardoned all those who were involved in the futile revolt by General José Sanjuro in the August of 1932. The monarchists joined hands with the fascists to achieve their goals. Streets of Spain saw violence on the streets and military crowded to stop this turmoil. The scenario was more of a political cataclysm than a peaceful way of solving problems, the democratic way. After two governments went down by the end of 1934, the members of Spanish Confederation of Autonomous Right-Wing Groups CEDA, came into power. All the Republican members in the military were removed and the salaries of the farm workers were made half. An association of political parties was formed, which is referred to as Front Populaire, who won the general elections of 1936. It was a narrow win. Initially, Manuel Azana Diaz had a weak minority government, but he fortified his position and soon took the place of President Niceto Alcalá Zamora in April 1936. It was in Azana's rule that the Spanish Civil War broke. Prime Minister Santiago Casares Curiga did not care about the warnings which he received about a military sedition that involved many generals. It was this military uprising that led to the Spanish Civil War in July 17, 1936. The Spanish Coup There were many generals being removed from high posts by the Republican government and were being transferred to different places. Emilio Mola was made the military commander of Pamplona Navarre, Francisco Franco was sent to head the Canary Islands and the new general of Balearic Island was Manuel Godet Lopez. The only one who was in a beneficial situation was Mola, as he could easily oversee the mainland uprising. José Sanjuro was the main person of the whole operation and also made an agreement with the Carlists. 
Next to Sanjuro was Mola, who was the brains of the operation and next in command after Sanjuro. Falangism was introduced by José Antonio Primo de Rivera y Sáenz de Herida, which was an ideology inspired by fascism. However, he was imprisoned and executed later on. General Juan Chauque and the then Prime Minister Casares Curiga met on June 12, 1936. Jaguia managed to convince Curiga that he was loyal to the Republic. Franco was previously the director of military academy and was also the one who had crushed the strike of Austrian miners a couple of years back in 1934. This made him an important player in the entire plan. The Army of Africa, which was considered to be the best and the toughest in the entire army, had high respect for him. On June 23, 1936, Franco wrote a secret letter to Corioga stating that the army was untrustworthy but could be bridled if he were made their head. Corioga did not take any steps to arrest or stop Franco. Some of the British supporters who were with the insurgents had Franco transported to Spanish Morocco from Canary Islands in a chartered plane by the name Dragon Rapid. Franco reached Morocco on July 19, 1936. Lieutenant Jose Castillo, who was a police officer in the Guardia de Asalto, was murdered in Madrid by Falangists on July 12, 1936. Castillo was also the member of Socialist and had initially headed the assault guards who had brutally crushed the uprisings just after the funeral of Lieutenant Antasasio de los Reyes, who was a part of Guardia Civil. Reyes was shot by the anarchists in a military parade which was held to the venerate five years of Republic on April 14, 1936. Captain Fernando Condes of the Assault Guard was Castillo's close friend and immediately after Castillo was shot, he went to arrest the founder of CEDA, José María Gilrobles Quinones, to avenge the death of Castillo. Since Quinones was not home, Condes and his squad went to José Calvo Sotelo, who was a famous parliamentary conservation and a monarchist. One of the members of the squad by the name of Luis Coenza shot Sotelo on his head, killing him instantly. Some say that Condes' intention was just to make an arrest and Coenza took a self-decision by shooting Sotelo. Retaliations were huge as Sotelo's death involved the police, which led to more suspicions. The opponents on the right got a point to discuss and ponder on. The generals, on the other hand, were ready with their plans and were almost ready for the uprising and this occurrence was like a catalyst to the whole situation. It was a sort of cover-up and explanation for the coup which was about to take place. And it begins. Everything had been planned ahead and the date and time of the rebellions was already decided. July 17, 1936, at 17.01 is what Manuel Falconde, the leader of the Carlists, had said. The time of the uprising was changed and the men in Morocco, which was a protectorate of Spain, were to rebel at 0500 on July 18, 1936, while the men in Spain were to revolt exactly 24 hours later so there could be a balance in the revolt of Spanish Morocco and things could be controlled easily. The men would then be sent back to Iberian Peninsula to accord with the uprisings there. The coup was intended to be a quick one, but the government still had control over most of the country. It was quite definite that Spanish Morocco would be brought under control. The idea was uncovered in Morocco on July 17, 1939, and the plotters put the plan to action immediately. The rebels hardly faced any conflict. They shot around 189 people. Franco and Gotted were allocated to take over the islands, which they did in no time. Prime Minister Casares Quiroga was offered help on July 18, 1936, by the Union General de Trabajadores and Confederación Nacional de Trabajo, but he refused. The angered groups went on a general strike. The buried weapons were surfaced. The paramilitary forces, military force formed by the government, don't take action immediately. They wait to see how effective the militia military force, which is formed for the public, is before they move in to crush the revolt. Action taken on time by the militias or the rebellions decided the fate of a city at the time of uprisings. Seville was safeguarded by General Gonzala Cuepo Delano for the rebellions as he took quick steps. He made numerous arrests. 
Result of the coup The rebellions couldn't manage to control any big cities except for Seville, and this was where the African troops of Franco landed. The other areas which were easy to capture were Lyon and Old Castle. The first troops from the Army of Africa helped in taking over Cadiz. Almeria, Malaga and Jeanne were still under the control of the government. The rebellions were cornered in Montana barracks and after a two-day fight, the uprising was crushed. The prime minister of the country, Coiroga, was replaced by José Giral when the civilians get weapons. With weapons to fight the rebellion, the main industrial centers such as Barcelona, Valencia and Madrid were kept safe from the uprising. However, the anarchists took control of Barcelona and huge regions of Catalonia and Aragon. General Gotted was given death punishment after he surrendered in Barcelona. Most of Cantabria, Basque Country and Asturias, along with the entire east coast and central area surrounding Madrid, were under the control of the Republican government. The rebellions called themselves Nacionales, which literally translate to nationalists. In the end of the coup, the nationalists controlled 11 out of 25 million population of Spain. About 50% of Spain's territorial army supported the nationalists, along with 60,000 men, somewhat half of Spain's military police forces, carabineers, assault guards, civil guards and around 35,000 men from the Army of Africa. About one-third of artillery pieces and machine guns and less than half rifles were under the control of Republicans. They had around 18 tanks, which were designed and equipped with all modern amnesties, but the nationalists had taken control of 10. Numerically, the nationalists were less in terms of navy, but some of the highest commanding officers and two of the best cruisers were taken by the nationalists. Although most of the air force of Spain was retained by the government, it was quite outdated in terms of equipment. Participants of the Spanish Civil War the Spanish Civil War was between the Republicans and the Nationalists. Nationalists The insurgents, or as they call themselves, Nacionales, and Franquistas, or Fascists, by the rivals, planned the uprising because they were afraid that the country would be disintegrated. They also opposed separatism. The Nationalists were also known for their anti-communism because of which several other movements, such as monarchists and phalangists, came up. The leaders of such movements were rich, especially landowners, and came from conservative backgrounds. Alphonsists, Carlists, Fascist Falange, Spanish Nationalists, monarchists and conservatives were with the Nationalists. Almost all the nationalists had strong Catholic beliefs, but the local clergy of Spain had their complete support. Businessmen, Catholic clergy, many important people from army were for the nationalists. One of the most important purposes of the rightists, right-wing politics, which comprised of reactionaries, traditional conservatives, monarchists, racial supremacists, fascists and Nazis, was to protect the Catholic Church from the anti-clericalists who belonged to the Republicans and accused the Church for the problems that Spain was going through. The Republican form of government was liberal and their policies were guarded by the 1931 Spanish Constitution. The Church was completely against the free thoughts. Before the Spanish Civil War could happen, Spain faced another rebellion in the year 1934. The revolt is known as Asturian Miners' Strike. The rebellions killed around 100 pro-Catholic police clergy and religious civilians. They also burned down several religious buildings. It was in this revolt that Franco had bought the Ejército de África, or Cuerpo de Ejército Marroquí, the African armed forces belonging to Spain's colonial army, and suppressed the revolt with the help of bombing raids and artillery attacks. The African army was also known as the Spanish Legion, and in the revolt of 1934 they had killed many people which included women and children. The result of the suppression was even more ruthless. The prisoners of Asturias were tortured, actually. The Constitution of Spain, Articles 24 and 26, banned the Society of Jesus, or as they are commonly known as Jesuits. This slighted many conservatives. There was a revolution which happened just before the Spanish Civil War, in which about 7,000 common people and clergy were killed. 
This event had aggravated the conservative Catholics who supported the nationalists wholeheartedly after this occurrence. The Regulares, or the Moroccan Huertas Regulares, Indígenas, also joined the revolt. They had an important role to play in the Spanish Civil War. Republicans The only two countries who sided the Republicans in the Spanish Civil War were USSR and Mexico. USSR Major Lee was of much help as they sent volunteers, gave them political support, weapons and money to buy them. Most of the countries chose not to take sides, which upset many intellectuals in the United Kingdom, the United States, to all those who followed Marxism and a few more European countries. The International Brigade was formed by the Communist International and many foreign parliamentary from different countries who were neutral volunteered to participate in the war and support the Republicans. Although the military forces were not as noteworthy, however, they did boost the morale of the Republicans. The Republicans comprised of the centrists who looked forward to much reformed Spain and supported liberal democracy and revolutionary anarchists who were against the Republic form of government, but they fought beside the Republicans to suppress the coup, landless peasants and people from industrial areas of Basque Country, Asturias and Catalonia. This group was known by several names like Lealists or Loyalists, Republicans, Popular Front, the Government and their rivals addresses them as Los Rojos, or the Reds. All the workers from the fields, a section of middle-class people and the urban workers, took sides with the Republicans. The conservative Catholics of Galicia, Basque Country and Catalonia looked forth to independence from the central government of Madrid. Self-government was allowed by the Republicans for two areas and after October 1936, their armies united under the People's Republican Army, which was further restructured into mixed brigades. Some famous people such as Norman Bethune, who was a Canadian thoracic surgeon, George Orwell, the writer of homage to Catalonia and Simone Weil, who was earlier an anarchist, but her short-sightedness made the anarchist group suspicious that she would shoot them recklessly and did not take her on any missions. Foreign Involvement in the Spanish War There was an alliance signed by around 27 countries which said that they would not intervene in the Spanish Civil War nor supply any arms to Spain. This political alliance was led by France and Britain. Italy, Soviet Union and Germany signed the alliance but went on to support the Spanish Civil War. United States of America went ahead with the support unofficially. The secretive actions which were happening around the world was giving way to another world war. Foreign Help for Republicans Soviet Union Soviet Union had already signed the alliance which stopped it from intervening in the Spanish Civil War. USSR provided the most help to the Republicans. The then General Secretary of Russia, Joseph Stalin, had provided enough weapons, tanks and planes to the Republicans, but all of them seemed to be lesser modern compared to the ones which Germany provided the Nationalists. The weapons and supplies which were shipped from Russia to Spain, but the process turned to be very slow. The ships concealed in various ways arrived in the ports of Spain where they were received by the Republicans. 176 tons of gold reserves were paid to the Soviet Union through Bank of Spain, which was sent through France. This act was subject of debate later on. France the Prime Minister of France, Léon Blum, supported the Republicans, but he feared a revolt would trigger in France. He did not send direct help to the Spanish Republicans. He was with the Republicans because he dreaded the Italy and Germany, who were fascist and Nazi, respectively would become allies if the Nationalists became successful in their coup, which was bad for France. Any aid which France sent was opposed and convinced by the British generals Bloom, who declared that France would not send any forces or technology to Spanish Republicans on July 27, 1936. But France also said that they have the rights to offer aid if it wanted to the Republic. A gathering of 20,000 pro-Republicans on August 1, 1936, requested Bloom to send them an aircraft. Just at the same time, Bloom was attacked by the leftists because he was supporting Republicans. The French ambassador in Germany was informed by the German government that they would hold France responsible for supporting the plans of Moscow if they support the Republicans. 
Therefore, France signed the Non-Intervention Agreement on August 21, 1936. Bloom knew nothing could be done to help the Republicans openly, so he used secretive measures to help them. He sent the Potes 540 bomber, which the Republican pilots nicknamed Flying Coffin. From August 1936 to December of the same year, Dwoytin and Dwa, 46 aircrafts of France, buzzed to help the Republicans. French engineers and pilots were also sent from France. Any aircraft bought from other countries could pass from France to Spain without interruption. This free passage was only till September 8, 1936. The Germans had informed Franco about the help the Republicans were getting from the French through military intervention in Balearic Islands and Catalonia. Although the support from the French to the Republicans was only till December 1936, the Nationalists were always afraid of their intervention in the war. There was a time in 1938 when Franco was afraid about French intervention when the Nationalists were almost on the verge of becoming victorious. Although France was supporting the Republicans, there were some French fascists and anti-communists who supported the Nationalists, known as La Cogule or Comité Secret d'Action Révolutionnaire. They played an important role in destroying some important ships in the ports of France, which were carrying guns and relief equipment to the Republicans in Spain. Mexico The Spanish Republicans had the support of most of the Latin American governments such as Peru, Argentina, Brazil, Chile and Mexico. Mexico did not listen to the non-intervention proposals and helped the Republicans openly. They sent 20,000 rifles and 20 million cartridges and $2 million cash as aid. Mexico arranged a sanctuary for the refugees of the Republicans and their families. There were 50,000 people who took refuge in the cities of Morelia and Mexico City. International Brigades There were many people who were not Spaniards and yet thought that the Republicans were right and also the way to remove fascism. Units from all over the world representing 53 nations came to be a part of this international brigade. There were roughly 40,000 people who supported the brigade and about 18,000 fought by the Republicans' side. Most of the volunteers were from France, followed by a federal state of Austria, Italy and Germany. Other countries were United States, Ireland, Romania, Kingdom Yugoslavia, Soviet Union, China, Polish Republic, United Kingdom Canada and Kingdom of Hungary. Foreign Help for Nationalists Italy The Italians joined the Spanish Civil War when Hitler encouraged Benito Mussolini to join the war. Italy had been established as a major power after it won the Second Italo-Abyssinian War, however having the Spanish as their allies would let them control the Mediterranean theatre of operations. The Royal Italian Navy helped in supplying aircraft, guns, soldiers and artillery to the Nationalists. Their warships helped in removing the barricade which the Republican forces had formed. Germany Without losing any time, Hitler sent immediate help to the Nationalists in Spain. Soldiers and aircraft were sent by him. However, the Spanish Civil War also meant there could be a world war and Hitler and his army were not prepared for one, hence he encouraged Italy's Mussolini to do partake in the war. About 16,000 German soldiers fought with the Nationalists and 300 on an average were killed. Germany used Spain as a base to check their newly designed weapons such as Junkers Ju-52, Transport Trimotors and Luftwaffe Stukas. German armies were of great help to the Nationalists as they undertook many operations and helped the Nationalists to become victorious. Portugal Franco's Nationalist army received immense help from Portugal in terms of logistics and ammunition. A volunteer force by the name of Viriatos fought with Nationalists till the Civil War lasted. The then Prime Minister of Portugal, Antonio de Oliveira Salazar, was the one who helped Franco in his uprising. Other Volunteered Forces Just like there were supporters for Republicans, United Kingdom also had many people who supported the Nationalists and came forward to help them irrespective of the political alliance of non-intervention. 
Even though the government of United Kingdom had declared that it was a crime to fight in Spain, there were about 4,000 volunteers who were fighting in Spain with the nationalists. There were Romanian volunteers who came to Spain in December 1936 to assist the nationalists with their cause. About 600 Irish, who were mostly Catholics, fought aside Franco. Course of Spanish Civil War 1936 None of the years experienced such massacre and killings that happened in 1936. Both the Red Terror, which was caused by the Republicans, and the White Terror, which was caused by the Nationalists, caused several deaths. However, it is quite clear and also agreed by the historians that the number of deaths was much higher in the White Terror as compared to the Red. Franco's Nationalists were more cruel and brutal and the Republicans. In a plane crash which happened just three days after the uprising, one of the coup leaders, Sanjurjo, was killed, which meant Mola and Franco had to take care of the uprising. Mola took north, while Franco took south. The Ferrol, Galicia, Spanish naval base was taken by the Nationalists on July 21, 1936. The Nationalists comprised mostly of generals which made their armies more effective and organized, whereas the Republican forces were disorganized. The Nationalists had captured Guipuzcoa and they also managed to shut down the French borders to the Republicans. The Republicans who fought under Prime Minister José Giral were unable to handle the situation. Once he resigned, on September 4, 1936, Francisco Largo Caballero took over charge who belonged to socialist organization. The Republicans began to unite under his command. At one of the meetings of Nationalists, which was held on September 21, 1936, in Salamanca, Franco was selected as the chief military commander. Alcazar was also taken by the Nationalists on September 27, 1936. Once the siege took place, Franco declared himself Caudillo, which means chieftain in Spanish. He used power to unite royalists and phalangists with the Nationalists. By October 1, 1936, Franco was the head of armies and state in Burgos. The troops also took Oviedo from the Republicans on October 17, 1936. Oviedo is in northern Spain. The Nationalists had planned something for Madrid. They began an attack on November 8, 1936, forcing the Republicans to move their headquarters from Madrid to Valencia. The Republicans did not make it easy for the Nationalists and put up a tough fight against them. They fought from November 8 to November 23, 1936. The 5th Regiment of the Republicans was strong and help also came from international brigades. The Nationalists were unable to take the capital city. Franco bombarded the city from air and in the next two years continued to attack the city many times. They managed to push the Republicans in the Second Battle of Coruna Road in 1936, but they failed to take over the city of Madrid. 1937 The city of Malaga was taken by the Nationalists on February 8, 1937. In the Battle of Harama, the Nationalists occupied much of the region while simultaneously cutting the supplies for the Republicans in Madrid through Valencia Road. The Battle of Guadalajara was an important win for the Republicans. France lost many supplies and had 5,000 casualties. The Germans said the Nationalists should focus on taking more susceptible areas before the take in the main cities. In the months of April and May, there was much chaos in Catalonia. There was a dispute in the Republicans' group, which the Nationalists were happy about. However, they did not take any exceptional advantage of the situation. When Guernica fell into the hands of the Nationalists, the Republicans suddenly began to fight with zeal and enthusiasm. In the month of July 1937, the Republicans made an attempt to recapture Segovia, which delayed Franco's advancement. However, they couldn't manage to hold it for too long. Like San Julio, Mola also received the same fate and was killed in an airplane accident on June 3, 1937. Republicans launched another attack on Brunette, but they failed to take over and, while doing so, lost many significant troops. About 25,000 Republican casualties were reported. An attack made on Zaragoza by the Republicans also failed miserably. Satanda was taken by Franco in the month of August 1937, followed by Gijón in October. 
When Franco and his armies moved forward toward Valencia, the Republican government moved again for the second time. The Republicans went to Barcelona this time. 1938 In the beginning of the year, the Republicans managed to conquer the city of Tyrell from the Nationalists. Franco's men were efficient, they attacked the city and took it back from the Republicans on February 22, 1938. Franco was dependent on Italian and German air support entirely. In their Aragon offensive, which began on March 3, 1938, the Nationalists marched through the Mediterranean and cut Republican-held part of Spain in half. The Republicans called for peace in the month of May, but Franco looked for unconditional surrender. The war continued and the Nationalists moved towards the capital of Valencia, but was stopped by the forces. In the Battle of the Apro, which began on July 24, 1938, and lasted till November 26, 1938, the Republican government started a campaign to join their territories back. Franco oversaw the battle and the Republicans were unsuccessful. The Republicans withdrew from Apro. Just before New Year, Franco attacked Catalonia fiercely. 1939 by February 1939, Catalonia was in the hands of nationalists. Tarragona and Barcelona were also taken in January, while Girona fell in the month of February. Both France and United Kingdom accepted Franco's rule on February 27, 1939. Madrid and a few more places were still under the Republicans. Colonel Segismundo Casado from the Republican Army and Julian Besterio, who was a politician, revolted against Juan Negrin, the Prime Minister. They formed the CND, Consejo Nacional de Defensa, to strike peace with the Nationalists, but Franco refused to take anything but unconditional surrender. The Nationalists took over Madrid on March 28, 1939, and by March 31, 1939, entire Spain was under their control. On April 1, 1939, Franco declared the victory of the Nationalists on radio after the last of what remained of the Republican forces surrendered to the Nationalists. Franco ruled for the next 36 years till he died in November 1975. The enemies of Franco were punished, there was no mercy shown. About 30,000 Republicans were killed and thousands more thrown into prisons. Several were put to menial jobs, such as drying swamps and digging canals. Thousands of Republicans escaped to foreign countries, about 500,000 went to France. Refugee camps were set up in France, and the condition of these camps were pathetic. People continued to suffer with the changes brought about in the political system of France, and thousands died while being relocated and in concentration camps. Children Evacuation During the Spanish Civil War About 35,000 children were evacuated from the territories of the Republicans. About 20,000 kids were evacuated from Basque. The children were sent to Soviet Union, United Kingdom, Mexico and many other countries in Europe. Although the opposition in the government and many charitable organizations were against the thought of removing the kids from their homeland, but it was the best which could be done to save their lives. The kids were of a maximum age of 15. Every one of them found a home, while most of them were sent back to Spain once the Spanish Civil War came to an end, but many of them chose to stay with their new families. Spain is a beautiful country and currently has a parliamentary constitutional monarchy form of government, which is guided by the Spanish Constitution 1978. The king is the head of the country, which is inherited by his children. There are two autonomous cities and 17 autonomous communities. Every region is governed by local government, but the state continues to hold the ultimate power. Spain has seen much bloodshed, rebellions, broken families, death, pain and cries. The Spanish Civil War had made Franco a dictator, a ruler who ruled the country for the next four decades. Secret police saw that the people followed their leader. Catholicism was the only religion to be followed. However, with time, Franco loosened his control and became liberal in the end years of his rule. Prince Juan Carlos was named his successor. King Felipe VI is currently the head of Spain, who looks to the daily affairs of his country.